Welcome to another episode of This Goose is Cooked, where we review books intended for our future generations. Today's book, Madeline, by Ludwig Bemelmans, published by Viking Press, a division of Penguin Books USA, Inc. Madeline is a Caldcott honor book. I cannot believe Caldcott would give out their award for pictures like this. They were extremely underwhelming. The girls' faces in the book were just drawn as smiley faces. They didn't have a nose. They just had two dots for eyes and a line for the mouth. His birds in the pictures were drawn how I was taught to draw them back when I was a young lad, as upside-down Ws. And the pictures just seemed to be rushed and mainly drawn out in pencil. Highly overrated, after all the hype I was given. I can see why this is a cult read for the ladies, though. It was well written and even had rhymes. The words just flowed well, and it kept you entertained with different places and events happening along the way. Madeline was a tad too long of a book for a story that goes absolutely nowhere. The book follows these 12 girls, Madeline in particular, in what seems to be an orphanage or a boarding school in Paris. Spoiler alert, Madeline ends up getting appendicitis. The book starts out introducing the 12 girls in their house. Then it shows them traveling around the city of Paris, from the opera to Notre Dame, in all sorts of weather. The book then introduces Madeline as the smallest one of all. It explains how fearless she is. She wasn't afraid of mice, and it shows her playing with mice, which is a little weird. Then at the zoo, all the other girls were afraid of the tiger, and Madeline just says, and I quote, Pooh, pooh, which I don't get at all. Must be a French thing. Lost in translation. Madeline would even play around on the bridges and scare her caretaker, named Miss Clavel, half to death. You think all of this fearlessness is going to come back later in the book and Madeline is going to do something cool or save the day. But it doesn't. Everyone goes to sleep back at the house and Madeline wakes everyone up because she looks to be in severe pain from appendicitis. The doctor comes, of course, and whisks her away to the hospital for surgery. Madeline wakes up in the hospital after surgery and is bedridden. There's not much the author can do at this point to keep it exciting. It's just her sitting in a bed. Finally, all the girls and Miss Clavel come to visit her with flowers. And the girls play with toys that were in the hospital room, which leads to everyone getting to see Madeline's scar from the appendix being taken out. All the 11 girls leave Madeline and go back to the house for bed. In the middle of the night, they all wake up Miss Clavel crying because they wanted their appendix out too. For some ridiculous reason, I don't know. The story ends on that, literally. The book states, I quote, and that's all there is. There isn't any more. Really, there isn't any more? How about Madeline getting released from the hospital? Or did she have complications from surgery and die? All of that build up about how brave Madeline is and you think she's going to do something exciting. But nope, all the reader gets is Madeline sitting in bed. It's like Ludwig pulled a joke only he was in on. He could have had Madeline do something in the hospital at least. Hell, just give me a picture of her leaving triumphantly. Something, anything other than her just sitting in her bed in a boring hospital visit. With all of my objections to different parts of this book, from the poorly drawn pictures to the build up to nothing, I'm going to give this book the highest score I have ever given. On a scale of 1 to 5, I'm going to give this book a 4.1. I'll have the full bird, because I recognize great writing when I see it. There were little to no mistakes, and it kept me entertained for most of the book as the girls went around the city. I may end up regretting this high of a score in the future, but I'm sticking to it. This goose is cooked. Join us next time for another in-depth book review.